of my name is Dora Nybrand. I'm a student at the Budapest University of Technology and Economics. And today I'd like to talk about person identification based on keystroke dynamics in this video. I would like to start with a question. What does happen when we lose our credit card? Well, in the best case, nothing. But in other cases, someone may find it. And let us assume that this person wants to buy something for himself or herself on eBay or some plane tickets. Well, what stops him? Nothing. For these purchases, we only need a few numbers that are written on our credit card. Personal identification based on keystroke dynamics may offer a solution for these and similar problems. Before going into details, let us note that there is an increasing interest in person identification based on typing patterns. It can be attributed to several factors. Let's see a few of them. First of all, internet-based services require reliable person identification. Such services include online banking or online courses like Coursera. Furthermore, person identification based on keystroke dynamics is cheap and widely accessible. The reason why person identification based on keystroke dynamics works is that our dynamics of typing is characteristic to us and one is hardly able to mimic another person's dynamics of typing. Although the dynamics of typing is characteristic to users, it's clear that one cannot type always exactly with the same dynamics. In this figure, we can see the durations of the first 25 keystrokes from two different users who type the same text two times. The first column belongs to user 1 and the second column belongs to user 2. One can see that the time series of the same user are more similar to each other than to the time series of the other user. For example, an exceptionally long keystroke at about the fifth position is characteristic to user 1, whereas quite short keystrokes at about the 20th position are characteristic to user 2. So we can see that these patterns are recognizable, but in the case of a larger system where there are millions of users, it would be time consuming and inefficient to do it by human experts. So approaches based on machine learning are required for user identification based on typing dynamics. We consider the task of person identification based on the dynamics of typing as a time series classification problem. For time series classification problems, there are various approaches, from which the first nearest neighbor classifier with dynamic time warping is considered as an extremely competitive classifier, outperforming many complex models. But one of the recently observed shortcomings of nearest neighbor models is their suboptimal performance in the presence of bad hubs. In order to understand it, let us observe that the nearest neighbor relationship is not symmetric. For example, x2 is the nearest neighbor of x1, but it doesn't mean that x1 is the nearest neighbor of x2 as well. In this example, we can see that the nearest neighbor of x2 is actually x3. Hubs are instances that appear to be the nearest neighbor of surprisingly many other instances. And we say that a hub is bad if its class label differs from the class labels of those instances that have it as their nearest neighbor. These bad hubs are responsible for surprisingly large fraction of the total classification error. Therefore, taking the presence of bad hubs into account would improve the accuracy. Thus, we propose to use hubness aware machine learning techniques, which are among the most promising machine learning techniques for time series classification. But despite this fact, they haven't been applied to person identification based on typing patterns yet. For our task, we use hubness aware regression. Our solution is based on pairwise decisions. This means the following. We train a separate model for each pair of users. For example, we train a model that is able to decide whether a typing pattern is more likely to belong to user 1 or user 2. Another model that decides if the typing pattern is more likely to belong to user 1 or user 3 and so on. And if the first model is given a new time series, it can decide whether it is more likely to represent the typing dynamics of user 1 or user 2. This approach is consistent with the circumstances under which person identification problems arise in real-world applications. For example, in online banking, the user claims an identity and the task is to decide whether the claimed identity matches the true identity. For the aforementioned pairwise decision models, we propose to use the classification via regression approach. Concretely, we propose to use key nearest neighbor regression with error correction. It is a hubness aware extension of the key NN regression and it is suitable for time series classification. 
In our case, the instances are time series. In order to use ECK and ND time series, we need to be able to determine the nearest neighbors of the time series. For this, we use dynamic time warping, which is one of the most prominent time series distance measures. In order to evaluate the proposed approach, we collected time series data describing the dynamics of typing. We collected this data over several months. From this data, we extracted two types of time series, one which consists of the times between consecutive keystrokes, and another which consists of the duration of each keystroke. We focused on these because we thought that these two attributes of our typing would be informative. In these two figures, you can see our experimental results. In the first diagram, we can see the classification accuracy of the combined models. By combined, we mean that we used both the time series of the times between consecutive keystrokes and the time series of the duration of each keystroke. It can be seen that our approach, DCKNN, outperforms the baselines. And in the second diagram, we can see the accuracy of our approach for various types of data, and it is clear that by combining the two types of data, we get better accuracy. Furthermore, it's quite surprising that the duration of each keystroke is more informative than the other attribute. To sum up the talk, we can say that we consider the task of person identification based on keystroke dynamics. For this, we use the new hubness aware approach called ECKNN. We got promising results, and according to our research, people may be identified based on their dynamics of typing. In order to encourage further research, we made our collected data publicly available. Furthermore, we announced a challenge in which anyone can participate, and you can read more about it in the following link. If you're interested in this topic, you can find more about it on our website. Thank you for your attention.